is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Make Money and Have Fun show. I am super pumped up for this episode. I think this is probably going to be my first ep episode that is the highest energy level and the most electrifying episode I've done yet because I have a guest on today that rivals enthusiasm to my own, which is even hard for, for me to believe. But we're going to get into him in a minute. First, I want to focus on you. So remember, there's a couple of ways to actually interact with us on this platform. So the really cool thing is whether you're viewing us from YouTube right now, from Facebook, or wherever you're at, say hi, say hello, let us know in the comments because we can actually bring your comment right up on screen just like this. And if you have questions for my guest today, Mr. Dr. Obam Bowen, who I'm going to get into in a minute, you can actually ask your questions right in the comment. I'll bring it right on screen and we can ask your question for you. The second really cool thing that I did for everybody today is I actually created a keyword for Dr. Obam Bone. So if you look at that ticker down at the bottom, it tells you what to do. So this phone number right, right over here, 215-596-1515. That's my direct cell phone number. So if you text in the keyword, Obam to that number, 215-596-1515, we'll actually be able to bring you on backstage with us, get that VIP access going on to ask him whatever question you have. So like I said, two ways to interact, write your comment down below, we'll bring it up on screen, or just text the word Obam to 215-596-1515. You'll be sent the link to join us. You can hop right in, ask your question on stage, and come be a part of us today. I'm super excited. Let's get into this. I got to give this guy a little bit of an introduction because he is a pretty cool dude. So Dr. Obambone truly believes it is essential to understand how our minds function. It's actually funny. I have him backstage and we were chatting for about two minutes and he was already talking about the mind and the subconscious and, and how it works and stuff like that. This, this guy, no pun intended, is going to blow your mind today. Um, he likes to talk about how we achieve the habits, attitudes, and beliefs that may stand in the way of releasing our vast inner potential and leading fulfilling and purposeful lives. Uh, he was born and raised in Georgetown, Guyana. Obam Bowen is a 20-year retired, decorated United States Marine, thank you for your service, who received a Purple Heart as an infantry commander for his service and wounds sustained in combat. He's Check this out. I mean, these, these, this list just goes on and on. He's classically trained as an MD, MBA, PhD, and a Doctor of Divinity. His expertise has helped global Fortune 500 companies, including Chevron, Walmart, Walgreens, Intel, and many others in development to their success. Obama's passionate expertise in helping individuals achieve business and life success combined with his 15 years of experience in network marketing landed him collaborations with Success From Home magazine in 20, 2012, 2013, 14, and 15. Uh, Dr. Obama has been featured on Fox News, KUSN, Sign On San Diego, and was also featured in Top Coastal News, Union Tribune, and has spoken and taught as a facilitator for NVTSI, Reboot, and several colleges and universities, including UCLA, UCSD, and Central Texas College. So let's put a big hand together for Mr. Dr. Obama Bowen. What's going on, man? No, I just realized I was saying, hey, 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 and my mic was muted. That was not oh, cool. We, we can't have that happening. Can't have you muted today. What's going on, man? Well, you know, I, I'll tell you what's going on, Fred. I'm, I'm enjoying the sun nice. here. And once we're done, I'm going to go for another run. And okay. that will wrap my day up because I had my first half of the workout. Then I need to go get some cardio in. You know, to keep up this energy at my age, you have to be able to work out sometimes twice as sure. I did when I was younger, because these guns don't feed themselves. You know, <laughs> they have to be <laughs> they have to be fed every now and then. I appreciate you, man. I uh, appreciate the nice the nice things you have to say. You have to say. And um, I was sitting there listening. And sometimes when you're doing all those things, you don't think about it. You know, as an entrepreneur, you're always moving forward. And now right. looking back, I'm like, it sounds pretty cool. I want to meet that guy. It's like, oh, he's talking about me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I love that. I have a friend of mine who's a speaker. And whenever, uh -huh. he asks him, whenever he asks him, you know, what, what what's going on when he has a speaking engagement, it's like, hey, what, what, what's going on today? He's like, I'm looking forward to what I have to say. <laughs> and, I, and I think that just adopting that attitude makes everything just that much more fun. It does. It does. You know, um, years ago, my, my dad, you know, always used to tell me, you know, stop fighting for your limitations. Stop fighting for your limitations. You know, as I was younger, 
And, uh, you know, growing up in, in, in Guyana, South America is a third world country. So you have two things. You have a dream and you have a hustle. And, you know, some people dream, but they don't do the hustle. And my dad, basically what my dad was telling me is you need a hustle as well. So what, what I do know is if you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. So I'm excited. I'm glad I never fought for those after a certain age. And uh, I'm just continuing with the hustle right now. I love that. I love that so much. So I got to start you off. I ask every person I bring on this show the same exact question. And okay. we have to do the brief version. But I want to know, what is your story? Wow. Uh, <laughs> Good question, right? That is a great question. Well, um, I know you can hear me because um, uh, I hear you. Uh, on the screen, both of us are frozen, but I just want to make sure you can hear me okay. I can hear you, and, and you're moving on my screen okay. Okay, perfect. Well, I'm not going to worry with that because I look like a static shock on mine, but that's okay. So what's my story? Uh, <laughs> my story, uh, here's the short version. I was born in, uh, in Guyana, South America. I'm the last of 13 kids, so there's actually 12 boys, one girl. Um, the one thing, you know, I know how to do more than anything else is hustle because when you're born into a third world country and somehow, you know, you get a chance to watch television because we couldn't even afford one. Uh, our neighbor had a television. I remember looking through the window to see their television and I saw America. I saw things like pizza and fast cars and buildings and all those crazy things. And I wanted some of that in my life. So long story short. On that end, my family eventually immigrated. It took about 11 years for that to happen from Guyana to the United States. And uh, I got to the U.S. when I was basically 13 years old, hmm. went to school in New York, got kicked out of every bad high school, expelled from a few, <laughs> and then spent my senior year in, uh, in high school in Atlanta, Georgia, hmm. then graduated from there and uh, joined the Marine Corps at 17. So... 20 years I spent in the Marine Corps and, and, you know, while serving as a Marine, I, you know, went to college, got a few degrees, got in and out of trouble, got married, got blown up in Iraq three separate times, was paralyzed from the waist down, couldn't walk or talk for nine months, then got a real bad divorce. My first wife uh, ended up pregnant with someone else's kid when I came back from the war. So that ended really bad. And, you know, from that, I had real bad PTSD, struggled, ended up homeless in my car for five years, then got introduced to network marketing. Um, and I say network marketing, but I really got introduced to personal development by the way of network marketing. And hmm. that's when my story as a uh, true entrepreneur really started. So hmm. in, in those five years, I mean, I worked my butt off. Um, it took a while. It took me about 28 months to get to a six-figure income in my second company. So the first company was practice. That was five years of learning, earning, where most people say network marketing doesn't work. But the, the truth is this, in any business, no business work. Do you know, Fred, also the gym doesn't work? I mean, if you go to the gym, you don't see none of the weights moving by themselves. You don't see right. nothing happening. And what I realized is you got to work. You have to figure it all out. But what I loved about the network marketing industry was you had mentorship. So, you know, I found a good mentor who taught me a few things. And then 28 months into the second company, I broke a six-figure income. And that's when everything changed because I had been hiding pieces of myself as a psychologist, as an MBA. I hit all those pieces because, you know, when I was homeless, I felt bad. I felt like I wasn't useful at all, but I let my emotions drive my actions. Hmm in the negative direction. So sure. that stopped after about six years in total. When I got to six figures and I figured out, well, if this works for six figures within a 12 month period, I'm sure it can work for six figures in a six month period. And I'm sure it can work in a three month period. And before you know it, I earned seven figures and then the rest was history from there. And then I started, you know, following my passion, coaching, consulting. I picked up my first contract with Walmart stores um, that was a six figure contract. Then it turned into a multiple seven figure contract since then. And, you know, I've had over 30 businesses now sold 22 of them, closed one this year due to COVID still have seven. And after a six year break in the network marketing space, I finally got back into it, forgot how much I missed that. Right. And now I'm just kind of, you know, enjoying life with my two year old daughter, my new wife and a beautiful life as 
they say, that's all she blows. That's my story. And I'm sticking to it, according to Les Brown. Nice, nice. I love that. It's actually funny. I had Les Brown on my show about a month or so ago. And as soon as you said that, I'm like, oh, that's Les Brown right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing, man. It, it's funny because you and I, we met in January, right? Back when things were That's normal, right. Right? They were, Just they were, before it went haywire. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, was, it was funny because I had no idea who you were at that time. I, I mean, I, I'd never heard of you before. A, a friend of mine introduced me to you. You had a you had an event going on in Cherry Hill and I'm, I'm an education, entrepreneurship, personal development junkie. So I'm like, all right, I'll be there. And day one, I mean, my mind was completely blown. I'm like, man, I, I don't know what's going on. I lost your camera there for some reason. I, I don't know why, just so you know. There you go. Now you're back. Now? Yeah, you're back. Good. Yeah, we're good. Um, and I was like, man, I, I don't know what the heck is going on, but this guy is really good. And, and it was like, I likened it to this idea of almost a Tony Robbins event mixed with a lot more spirituality in there. Whereas I think that Tony is a little bit more uh, mindset based. You kind of brought that, that almost like for lack of a better phrase, like hippie culture into there in a, in a way that's, that's kind of rooted in, in entrepreneurship. I'm just curious, where would you say that that all of that knowledge came from? Like, was that was that, you know, from your MBA? Was that from the network marketing thing? Or, or you know, where, where do you come up with all this stuff? Well, you know, it, it's a combination of all right. So um, I'm a lifelong student. Yeah. I, and I believe that we all should be that the moment you stop learning. Well, three things happen. You stop earning. You start dying. And your ego takes place. Now, when when your ego is in place, and I think here, let me let me move from this position because it seems like the the groundsman here at the resort is cleaning up and that's getting a little loud. So I'm going to move for a bit. <laughs> um, but, you know, when those things happen and ego shows up, you leave everything else out. But being a lifelong learner, the biggest thing for me is, you know, I grew up in in Guyana, as I said, my parents were of you know mixed backgrounds so my dad was more christian my mom was uh, her side of the family was more hindu so i had a clash of uh belief systems between both of them and different religions coming together and over the years i actually just did wanted to research more for myself my family uh, being the last of 13 kids there was a lot of crazy confusion going on being the youngest brother so I started studying. I mean, I read the Bible. I read the Apocrypha. I read the Upanishads. I read the Quran. I read everything. I studied them. I, I practiced. And, you know, what settled for me was being more spiritual than I was religious. And then I started searching for truth. And I found a lot of truth basically, you know, based in, in Christianity. So I put all those to the test and I studied them. And being a psychologist, I wanted to see, well, when it comes to faith, which faith is just another word for belief. So the moment you work in anything, all that matters is that you exercise faith or you exercise belief. And, you know, in my book, Today's the Day, chapter four focuses on belief and performance. It says you perform to the level of your belief. So it doesn't matter whatever it is someone does. It all stems back to their core philosophy, their core beliefs. What they, they, they consider to be truth is typically truth for them. It could be wrong in someone else's eyes, but it's truth for them. So that's how all of that came together. And my entire journey has always been searching for truth. I love it. I love it. That, that reminded me, one of, one of the biggest paradigm shifts I got from, from your mastermind that, that you were doing back in January was this idea that, that our belief system is only what we believe it to be. And, and you kind of debunked all the myths of, of this belief system. And I actually, I have your book here. I don't know if you can, you can see it on your camera, but I got a, I got a copy of your book right here. Awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah my, is, my screens are frozen, but I know the material I wrote it, so I should be good. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good on page uh, 137, paragraph two. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm messing with you. Oh man, what when when did you actually write this book? Was this before or after the homelessness or or you know when when did this come to be? See, when I actually wrote that book is it's it's a different. So that is that's the third book that I've published. I've okay. written several books. There's a few that I haven't published yet. All of them are timeline um 
released. And uh, there's a few that will be released this year and a few more that will be released in two years. So the first book I wrote was called The Philosophy of Success. And this is why, the, uh, why today's the day is important in this space. The first one was called The Philosophy of Success because when I wrote that book, at the height of my success then was understanding one main point, one main philosophy. And that is this, that f- your philosophy is basically what you know, how you hold it and how it affects what you do. So in order to be successful, you need to think successfully because thoughts becomes things. And if you have a consistent, persistent matter of thought, it becomes the actions which pertains into your results. So mm-hmm. writing that book was how I basically became what I deemed as success, right? Earning my first seven figures and having financial freedom. The second book was called Passion 365 because what, what I did after having all that success was I, I honored my wife who was there with me, you know, through the, the struggles, who was homeless with me uh, for four of the five years in the car, you know, being that, that woman, that person that helped see things through for me in my quiet crying closet moments. That book was one of the most successful books because I wrote about all the, the secrets of, of uh, becoming successful. And when I say successful, it was really in relationships in life in faith in family and fitness and finance. And we let that book soar for about two and a half years before I released uh, today's the day in 2018, which was two years ago. So today's the day is the culmination of putting it all together And the way I I write my books, the reason why they're time released, I write about several things that I know to be true, factual, but I never publish and release my books until I've lived it, mastered it, and I can teach it without even thinking and looking at the notes. So even though the the books have been written, I don't publish them until they're done, till I can actually share and recite just about every and anything in there that my life reflects my work. Mm. Amazing, amazing. So, so you're just you're just basically like a crazy workaholic then. Well, you could say that. I work specifically in specific times. I used to, you know, I used to be a workaholic, and here, here's what I learned: when I was a workaholic, I earned less than when I became work driven. Yes. Right, and there's a there's a huge difference between the two. When you think of it now, today I work probably. 70% less than I did when I was earning less than a hundred K a year. <laughs> now I work 70% less and well, let's just say I don't have a money problem at all. 100%. It's actually, it's actually really funny because I titled the show the make money and have fun show. And the, the idea behind that whole philosophy, that umbrella statement is this idea that it's not just about accumulating massive wealth and and becoming rich and wealthy. It's about creating alignment between your your own personal fulfillment and the sustainability of an income as well. And and whatever that looks like for you is is totally different. And that's really the cool thing about this show is that everybody that I bring on is bridging that gap, but they're bridging it in different ways. And and so it's so cool to hear you say that. Yeah. And, you know, here's the thing. Oh, for those who have ears, let them hear if, if it, meaning that they they may get it. Some may get it. Some won't. Mm. And for me, my definition of wealth is, is different. So I'm going to start with that. Then, then I'm going to share this philosophy. So my definition of wealth is this. How long you can live without actually having to work. And right now, for me, that's about another 125 years. That all depends on what you place down as what is an annual income for you that you won't have to work. So eight years ago, my wife and I said that to be $225,000 a year. That's the ideal lifestyle amount of income we want to be able to make. So in order to live a year without working, you need to have already earned 225 times two. So if you're 225 and that's all you have, then you don't have a year. You're surviving. So you need to have 225 over. So if you take that and multiply by 125 years, I'm good. I'm set. I'm great. That's wealth. Wealth is how much time you can buy without the possibility of working. Now, here's the philosophy that matches that. What I've learned over the years is that whatever you want, be it finances, love, 
rich, you, it doesn't matter. Everything, and I'm gonna go a little deep for a second, is mm. it comes down to one thing, frequency. Mm. See, it's all on a frequency. And all you have to do is tune into that frequency, get your body, your mind, and your actions to resonate at that frequency, and then everything that's at that frequency comes to you. That's all it is, it's that simple. So if it requires that you need to be a person of, if you wanna be an athlete, you wanna have a, a good body, and athletes resonate at a different frequency. So if you need to dedicate an hour a day, doesn't matter, oh, I'm busy, then sleep an hour less. Oh, I can't do this, then whatever you do that's less, those who are on a different frequency, there's one thing that's never in their vocabulary, and that's an excuse. Hmm. Yeah. I, wow. <laughs> Oh, we just opened up a whole a whole can of worms here that, that we can go down. I, I, I love that. It's um it, it's interesting for me because for, for me, myself personally, my own belief system is is I've separated philosophy and personal development into two two roads. And this just makes it easy for my mind to comprehend. I don't know if it's the direct definition or not, but for me it's it's like philosophy is more of the the spirituality and and understanding frequency and vibration and, and all this stuff that kind of brings the universe together. Whereas personal development is more rooted in the mind, at least in, in my eyes, the way, the way that I look at it. And so the, the fact that, that you're blending this and you're bringing it together is really cool. And especially for me, because I've spent a lot of years studying personal development from my own definition, and I kind of just started on the road of, of studying philosophy. And so it's, it's so cool to see it, to see it brought together and it, and it, it just really resonates with me at that point. I think it's it's so cool having you on here. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me on too, my friend. But, you know, it, it, it's crazy because it doesn't, and, and here's what most people never really understand in, in becoming successful. And I'm not just talking money. I'm talking faith, family, finance, fitness, fun, right? The five Fs of life. So, as which is actually a book I wrote already that's going to be published next year. <laughs> but in having that balance, when, when you're talking, you know, like philosophy, as you know, my definition of it is, it's everything you know, that include, you know, like in, in your case, where the two are separated, personal development and philosophy, but your philosophy is everything you know, mm -hmm. um, from the moment you were born, as your brain is collecting and storing information, right, how you hold that in, and how it affects what you do. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky for everyone else. Most people believe, like, for example, your path to success is different than mine. Mm -hmm. But someone who wants in success like you believe they have to do exactly what you do. And that will never happen. Now they can do it dissimilar, and which is why I always focus on finding what I call truth, universal truth. Things that are true, like it doesn't matter what language you speak, what religion you are, gravity is true. If you jump off this building by me, you're gonna land and you're gonna break something, you may live, but you'll die, but you will end in pain, it will end painfully. You will drop if you jump off the building. That's a universal truth. Right. So another universal truth that when it comes to two things that you think about faith, faith without work is death, meaning you can die emotionally, spiritually, physically. So if you don't put in the work in a relationship, that relationship dies. If you don't put in the work when it comes to business, that business dies. You can't just believe in that work and let, let it happen and show up for you. So, you know, faith, bring it down to a, another word that most folks can understand is belief. So belief without the work is that you can believe you can do something, but if you don't do it, it's not going to happen. So these are the universal truths or the facts that I look for in my life. What are all the truths? And then I just only follow that path of truth because it leads you to the frequency you're trying to get to much faster. Oh man, I love it. Speaking speaking of laws of truth, you hit me with one, and and we we got to go over it again for for the audience here. Talk to us about the law of seven, that that, yeah. that universal law. And briefly, I, I know we could we could go on for seven hours about the law of seven. Which, by the way, seven has been my favorite number for like my entire life. And when when you hit me with that, I'm like, you got to be kidding me right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know. Okay, so let let's 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 go back. Uh, a little bit since since you mentioned that we'll go a little deep for a second uh, mm -hmm. and go back to let's take it with faith first because you have to measure that faith and that belief to everything that that factually known in the real tangible world we know here so we go back 
we look at the Bible, it says that, you know, the world was created basically in six days. And then on the seventh day, the creator rested, right? God rested on the seventh day, which is some say tomorrow, some say today. It's the Sabbath. It doesn't matter. So seven universally is known as the number of completion, meaning that all things complete at seven. You know, you got seven days of the week. Ah, so let's just start real slow. From the time when a human being is born, and we're, we'll, we'll take the abridged version here. <laughs> when, yeah. a, when a human being is born, from birth to seven is the first cycle of completion. It also translates into a cycle of abundance. So you, you have abundance. You go through two cycles in your life, abundance and famine. So oh, feast and famine, abundance and famine, whatever you want to call it. So <clears throat> feast and famine, the first year is feast. That is the year that that human is born and they collect and store information from their parents. And within seven years, scientifically, they tell you that any human being knows, learns and understands enough to function from age seven until they die as a complete human being. So that cycle of learning for them is complete. Then they move into the second cycle, which is famine. So from age one to seven, they learn just about everything they can do we're not going to go in depth of all the first few years right. but from 7 to 14 is when they're now they should have learned enough to be able to function from age 7 to age 14 but for us here let's say in the united states they're going to school they're in high school pretty much and after high school they graduate from 14 to 21 slip into college that's another abundant cycle now these cycles go back and forth back and forth back and forth all the way up until seven cycles is complete. So if you look back at your life, at the times that you might have been, that might have been challenging, what are the most challenging years? From seven to 14, you're becoming a teenager, you're developing, you were supposed to master everything you learned from age one to seven to help you flow through seven to 14. Now you get into that abundant cycle again from 14 to 21, and they go on, so on and so forth. If you ever look back on your life where you were struggling, you weren't successful, maybe you had a heartbreak, breakups, relations, all those things that came during your famine cycle. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Now, there's one of the most powerful times, and it's the first time it ever happens in a human being's life or existence. And that's basically between the age of 42 to 56. It's a 14-year stint, right? And here's why that is, is when you get to the seventh cycle or the sixth cycle, the seventh starts again. It repeats. What do I mean? So from basically you get up to 42 and those seven years takes you to 49, which now completes that first cycle. So seven times seven is 49. What happens then is you start over again. So for the first time in the history of a human existence, they actually have two back-to-back -back abundant cycles. That cycle is called a cycle of jubilees, 14 years of success. If you've looked throughout history to some of the most successful men and women, you, you look at Oprah Winfrey, Bill Gates, everyone else, Jeff Bezos, the rest of them, their massive success, massive millions and billions came between the ages of 42 that entire 14 year stint. That's mm. when they amass massive wealth. All right. So knowing this, how did a lot of my success happen in my previous cycle before I turned, you know, 42, which was about two years ago and everything started going great because I married a woman eight years younger than myself. So one of us was always in a cycle. <laughs> and when my wife was in her cycle, I basically rode her wave. Most of the companies and businesses we launched and start were her ideas. I just worked them, perfected them, mastered them because she was in, in, in a sense, she was in season. She was in, in wave and I rode her wave. And now my wife once, <laughs> when I turned 42, my wife said, that's it. I'm done taking a break. I'm good because the next 14, well, the next 12 years, I'm still in season. I'm still in cycle. So the number seven, it doesn't matter. Anyone can try to dis disprove it or dispel it. But when you look back and you go dive deep in anyone's life, you will see it is unshakable. That is not just a fact. It's a universal truth. Yeah, I, I love that so much because it's it's funny because I always allude to Darren Hardy's book, The Entrepreneur Roller Coaster. 
And the, the really cool thing about bringing these, these people on, on my show every week who have been in business for a long time and, and have really amassed what many would call success, depending on your definition. Right. There, there's always that downtime. Everybody, everybody hits something. For you, it was homelessness. For, for other people, you know, I, I had a real estate investor on here a few weeks ago who told me he, he had a point where he had to pay $1.27 for gas in his car from, you know, change that he found in between his seats. And today he's right. got over $300 million in assets under management. And, and it's, it's always that interesting thing, like me looking at myself, I'm 25. So I'm kind of coming out of a, a famine stage and into a feast stage. And, and I'm starting to see the wheels turn. I'm starting to see all the, all the cycles kind of happening. And it just makes it that much easier. And, and I think that much more exciting to kind of look forward to it. It does. And, and be like, man, I, I know where I'm at. I know what I'm doing and I know what I'm leading into. So now I can go and make it happen. And, and once you told me that, again, my mind exploded. Ne next event of yours I go to, I'm bringing a Tupperware bin for all the pieces of my <laughs> mind. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, so I want to I want to jump back to your story about being homeless for five years. Um, yeah. I, I always I love to kind of look at desperation as a motivator and and kind of just see like what was it for for those people and, and yourself included, especially in this that kind of got you through that that time. You know what what was it that that helped you come out on top essentially? You know, it's um, it, it's belief or faith, right? Faith. In, in belief in self, in my abilities. And, you know, the other part was really, I was going to prove them wrong. Who, who was them? Them, the, you know, my ex, uh, my ex-wife and those who said I wasn't going to amount to anything else. Mm. So on, on a personal note, there was a lot of, um, just a little bit of the revenge I started listening. I, I heard um, a couple of mentors that said, you know, the best revenge is massive success, you yeah. know. And I worked on that philosophy and, and did those things for a while. And the best revenge is forgiveness. It really is. Um, has nothing to do with that. But you go through these stages of growing. You go through these, these stages of ingraining in, in your philosophy. But, you know, to get real in what really pulled me through, because at that time, you know, I was thinking of, you know, taking my own life. Mm -hmm. I had, you know, my oldest two daughters who are now 19 and 21. And my thing was, I didn't want to leave this earth without actually having something significant for them. So that was one of the reasons that pulled me through. You know, they've seen me at my lowest. I wanted to be able to survive and make it through for those girls. At, at the same time, I... You know, I, I lost custody and in my heart, I knew it, another piece was pride. I'm, you know, as, as a Marine for 20 years, they come out. It's like, there's no freaking way <laughs> that this is going to stay. It's going to happen. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so there were a lot of flowery words and then things that I used. And, you know, I <laughs> for a while just about cursed everyone um, <clears throat> and blamed everyone. But the one thing that shifted through the whole piece for me was being able to take responsibility for myself and then accept where I was. Cause you can, a great piece I came to understand is this. You can never grow from where you believe you are. You can only grow from where you actually are. So part of that belief was, you know, I've done all this, I'm this, I'm that and that. But the fact of the matter was I was still broken, homeless, living in a car. Yeah. And once I faced that reality, then I realized, well, I'm at the bottom. I couldn't go any lower. Well, the only lowers I could go is if I had lost my car and then start living in a box. But I was as pretty low as they can go. Right. So I forgot the, the pride. And then I took responsibility for my actions and I started over. And that started over was when I got introduced to personal development. It was getting my mind back right, getting situated within the right people. Stop looking in the past because that's not where I was going. Started becoming more future paced and future oriented. Then all of a sudden, my same friend who introduced me to personal development, you know, he said, bro, it, it, your real friends will tell you the truth. And this is what he says, bro, you're broke. You need to fix that shit. Said, OK, um, no problem. I'll do it. One Marine to another. So he introduced me to my first network marketing company. And then I got around a whole lot of people 
who were happy. I was like, what the hell is wrong with them? They drank the Kool-Aid. They, they, something must be wrong with them. You know, <clears throat> but I realized that happiness was a choice and they were choosing to be happy. And I was choosing to be this disgruntled asshole. So I eventually decided to change my attitude. The more you hang around people, if you hang around nine broke people, you'll be the 10. You know, you hang around nine happy people. Well, you'll be the 10th eventually, whether you like it or not, whether you take it in consciously or subconsciously, you will start to change. And it took me about two, three years for that to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, in that process, you know, I started, you know, I, I was happy. I was good. It wasn't about, well, it was about the money and it wasn't about the money. And most people, when they look at starting any business, <clears throat> there is that growing period. There is a few years that it will take to master your craft. Well, the first craft in that first company, I probably made maybe five grand in the whole five years. It wasn't that much, but the craft I was mastering is myself. And once I mastered myself and I had the belief, I had the understanding and I had basically the responsibility to move my ass assets then forward, it was taking their responsibility. So when I got started with the second network marketing company, all the work was done. The confidence was there. The ability was there. There's only two things I had to, two things I had to do, market and sell my ass off until I get to the goals that I wanted to be. So in that process of becoming better, that's what I did. And then 28 months later, I hit a multiple six-figure income. Then that changed. I launched my, my first company. That became a multiple seven-figure income. And then there were hundreds of millions later. Well, how did all that happen in about a course of eight years? It wasn't just eight years. It, it was really about 30 years. My 20 years in the military, the fall that I had, understanding that my responsibility was to myself, understanding that if I took responsibility, stop making excuses and looking in the back where I don't want to go. It's like if you're driving a car, you can't live in the damn rearview mirror. You're going to crash. You got to look forward. You look back every now and then to see what's happening with traffic. For me in life, it's you look back every now and then to take the lessons from the pitfalls you have, put those into practice and you keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. Anything else is just a damn excuse or a way to creatively avoid you from having what you really want in life. Wow. I love it. I love it. If you're here with us, drop some wow faces down below. If you're with us on Facebook, this is amazing stuff. Um, we got we to gotta talk about one more thing before we close this out, Dr. Obam. Uh, Absolutely. And, and this kind of comes down to, to me a little bit. I get a lot of people who come to me after this show and they, and they always talk about, oh man, Fred, how did you have Les Brown on your show? How did you have Dr. Obama on your show? Because I'm, I'm collaborating with all of really these high level superstars. And really... This kind of got solidified, like you said, it was, you know, 25 years in the making that you, you hear that one phrase that one time at that one seminar and you're like, God damn it, I knew that already. But <laughs> now, now it's sinking in. And that was this phrase right here. A closed mouth never gets fed. And, it, you know, really, it just it just showed me the the importance of, of asking of, you know, opening your mouth and, and asking for for what you want. And I mean, yeah. it, it's so much. So much amazing stuff, but let's, um, I want to wrap up with, with where you are now. So we kind of talked about the past and the, and the history, but you're now involved with something known as a CIRA. Tell us a little bit about a CIRA. What do you got going on in your life now? What's the next step for Dr. Obama yeah. Bowen? Yeah, well, you know, so here's where, where, where I am right now and why I decided to, to start working and, and then building with a CIRA. Um, for me, I, when it comes to, faith I'm, I'm settled i'm good i i my faith is strong my belief is good in, in what i believe as a really a spiritual being having this human experience which i i so much love now right so that's good family is great um love my wife uh let's just be real the 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 i don't know about most women most men but i know for me the reason you get married is to enjoy that person wholeheartedly emotionally physically Double tap on the physical side, right? Um, so my relationship is great. My daughters are now adults. They're having fun. My son is grown. He's married. Haven't given me any grandkids yet. Say yet. I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at him because we just had a two-year-old and I don't want him to because my wife wants another child. So after we have another one, then, then I can be a granddad. I don't want to be um, a grandfather having other kids that are younger than my grandchildren. Right. right. So <laughs> that's a whole different story. So that's family. Financially, I've, I've amassed, um, I wouldn't say as much as I can get. I've amassed as much as where my money now works for me. And literally for the next, for the rest of my 
natural life, I don't ever have to get up and work. Keyword mean I don't have to. I choose to because sure. if I just sit here, I become a sluggard. I'm pretty freaking young. But what I wanted now, this phase of my life, Fred, is, you know, I wanted the world to know a few things, not about me, but about my message, which involves knowing me. I haven't been that person that wanted to brand myself and get it out there till last year. I said, you know what? Time to give back. Then I'm going to start doing what the world needs to, to see to start first believing in the person and the brand. And then I can teach and help them because I really wanted to change the world. And that's, that's what brought me to where I'm at. So my wife and I, and I was traveling around doing a lot of the events that, you know, we met at. And my goal was, you know, I want to spend more time now with the family, but I still want to teach. So I wanted to do it on a platform digitally to where the world can actually start to get the message instead of me going to do the events. Because to be honest with you, even though I want to teach it, I'm not going to do it for free. I don't care how much of a philanthropist I am. There's so much of my time that I has, have to be rewarded. Sure. It's not just with the love and everything else. So my wife says, let's find a platform. I was actually going to create a company to do that. But then a good friend of mine who's the COO of Asira called me and told me um, about the platform they had to put my work on the platform, which is now in 65 different countries. And I said, you know what, let me take a look and see what's going on. It gave me the ability to stream my work live, put it on a, a platform to where people can see my work in multiple language across the world. But then the, the company bridges education, travel, uh, some physical products. It also bridges social media and the network marketing world together. So I said, well, these are all genres that I love. They're all billion and trillion dollar industries. Right. So the company bridged it all on together. I decided to get started with them, recording my work, my courses up on the platform. Folks are loving it. And I built a business when COVID launched. So they launched March 1st. COVID started March 7th. I built a multiple six-figure business in, in a few months there because I missed the industry. But now I'm taking on more of a corporate role. So I'm heading out to Dubai in um, the first quarter of next year. So in a few months, we're getting my affairs in order here so we can go to Dubai and have some fun. And the role then is to take that company and scale it to, uh, you know, a billion dollars within the next two and a half years. Yeah. So in, in doing so, that's going to be fun. It gives me a chance to help build and develop the field for, you know, network marketing. So for the average person who haven't had success, I can teach, train and develop them. Uh, and that would be at no cost because they've decided to get be part of a Sarah. And that's the part where it's going to be fruitful for me because I get to teach and train, not worry about the income because I'm taking on a corporate role for the company and they're going to take care of all the financials on that end for that, which gives me the ability to now travel the world, take care of what needs to get done and bless so many people. So that's, that's where I am now. I, I want to be able to just take care of those who believed that they can't be successful and help them change their philosophy. Because when you change your mindset, you change your life because mindset relates to action. Action relates to results and results relates to lifestyles. So if you want to change it, you got to change your philosophy going all the way back to what you believe. Bam. I love it. Mike drop right there. <laughs> it's so funny. I was, I was going to follow up and, and ask you, well, what do you want to leave our audience with? Is there, is there anything that, that you want to say to go? And uh, I think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, what I would leave the audience with is, you know, if you are watching this show, that means subconsciously and consciously because you're, you're watching it, but you are determined to be a better person and take, even if there's one thing from this segment with myself and a segment from anyone else, Fred is on his journey to be the best. Take the best out of every segment, develop yourself and connect with the people you want to. And as Fred said, it's always been one of my favorite saints, closed mouths never get fed. If you never ask, you will never receive. If the, the, you'll miss 100% of the shots you never take, but you might miss one shot out of a thousand that you take, that you actually hit, and that's the one you wanted to. And last piece is this, talking about shots. Michael Jordan was asked once about his greatness and success. 
And he says, well, the truth is I've missed over 3,000, almost 9,000 of the winning shots. But that's why I succeed. So don't be afraid to fail. Failure, or let me put it this way, success is the hangover of failure. When you figure that one out, you will be successful. Oh, I love it. I love it. This has been so much fun. Dr. Obam, thank you. Thank you so much for being here. This has been a blast. And uh, I hope that we reconnect again soon. Maybe it'll be in, in Dubai at that seven-star hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That, that's going to be fun. It'll be a, a blast. It's been a pleasure, my friend. Thanks for having me on. I'm going to go and enjoy some of this warm weather for a nice three and a half mile run. Maybe I might make it four, depending on how, how that goes. But appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me on. I hope this message reached and touched someone out there today in the audience. But uh, I look forward to reconnecting back soon. Absolutely. This has been great. See you guys. All right.